as i said in the last video that same trigger will have all your um events let me write all my events okay before insert after insert before update and com after update before delete delete get it so all my events are there now this particular trigger what i'm going to do is um we will first uh, learn the trigger and then once we learn the trigger we will see how to call your apex class logic from the trigger okay before that we need to learn about a few basics here in trigger so i'm going to go and type system dot debug same code okay the inside the trigger okay now this trigger has been saved make sure the trigger is active okay this trigger either you can make it active or deactive or you can make it activated or deactivated so how do you how do you check if the trigger is active or not active right you have to go to here you see this is active checkbox yeah if you make it false then save this will be deactivated okay so i'm gonna go and uh, refresh this once i refresh this is my trigger opportunity trigger right and and this trigger has only one line of code so my question to use this again i'm gonna go and create a new opportunity what do you think if i go and create a new opportunity will my trigger fire so let me give an opportunity name opp1 if if i click on save do you think my trigger will fire by the way how do you know if the trigger has been fired or not the trigger has a system dot debug so if you go to logs and if you open the logs you'll find the system dot debug okay if i click on save exit out this got this got saved right so what do you think if this will fire or not yes it will fire right so you have specified the before insert and after insert now my question to you is this how many time you think this system dot debug will be printed please think okay i'm going to open this double click this is my latest log debug only here we go two times my trigger system dot debug has been printed the reason why i hope you you got the reason right the reason is my trigger will fire on before insert and after insert because i have specified before and after both that's why my trigger is actually firing both the times and both the times it's it's printing inside the trigger is this clear yep okay what if i now go and uh, update this record let me just click on edit change the amount to 100 and update what do you think what will happen now if i click on save will the trigger be fired again if it is then how many times See, I have written here before update and after update. This is my log, latest log. Double click, and if you go to debug only, here we go. There are two print again. Why? Because your Apex trigger has two event: before update and after update. Make sense? And then if I go and try to delete this record, what do you think? How many times the trigger will fire? This record has been deleted. I'll go. double click debug only and here we go two times why because your apex trigger has before delete and after Are you getting me so whatever you write inside this bracket whatever business logic you define inside this trigger this will fire every time every time means before insert after or update after update fully after understood what if i remove before insert or let's say after insert Now put control X. I have removed the after insert. Okay, check this out. 
now i have only one insert even before insert there is no after insert okay what if i go and create a new record i'm just going to go and create a new record. if what do you think how many time how many time the um what do you think here how many time the apex system dot debug will fire let us go and check if i double click here i will see there is only one system dot debug this time not twice why only one because if you see my events i have only before insert there is no after insert understood so this is how you write a trigger and you define the events inside the trigger the concept is clear okay now the question might be coming in your mind that if the same trigger has been executed on before after these things right and how do you control how do you control the business logic let's say i want to type here this will fire only on before copy this the trigger is very interesting and it's very easy okay the way we will learn it will be like very easy just uh, focus on this okay this this will fire only when before insert after insert before update after update and before delete after delete okay understand my requirement now i want to fire this this line number 3 only when the before insert event occurs you getting me i don't want to fire all these lines okay see i want to control my logic now if the trigger will have like multiple lines of logic if you don't control it then every time your trigger will fire suppose you have written some business logic to send the email to the previous owner that hey owner your record has been transferred to someone else if you don't control that logic then whenever you insert owner will get the email whenever you update owner will get the email twice whenever you delete owner will get the email twice so it is important for you to control the lines of code that you have written how do you do it salesforce has given us few standard variables okay now let me just write this code and explain if i want to check here if trigger trigger dot is before get it and this is how we have to write and okay uh, twice this sign is called and and trigger dot um is insert this line line number 3 will determine that it will check first okay is it before this will be true this is a variable this is a system variable which will always return either true or false whenever before event occurs it could be before insert before update before delete whatever whenever before event occurs this will give you true if you new to apex you have to understand this or if you already know java or any other programming language this is how we do in all the other languages as well, right so line number 3 you are check if this and this both will return true then only the controller will go inside the bracket and line number 5 will be executed understood so when exactly this and this will be true whenever before insert happen you are inserting a record in opportunity the record will be inserted there will be two event before insert after insert in the case of before insert this will be true and this will be true and that's when this line will be executed you get it now i'm going to go and copy the same line we'll see b this now i'm going to check if it is is before i just write is after and insert 
डॉट एक्स यू गेरिंग मी लाइन नंबर टेन विल बी एग्जीक्यूटेड ओनली एंड ओनली वेन दी आफ्टर इंसर्ट हैपन so this line will not be printed multiple time see if you don't if you do not uh, you know check or control this logics then every time on before insert after insert before update after update before delete after delete every single time the all the lines will be executed so in this way you are actually controlling the business logic by yourself that means see i'm just showing you how to control it actually your business logic will be like very big okay and uh, you know all you have to do is you have to check if it is before insert all this business logic if it is after insert call this business logic and quickly copy the other two I'm checking if is before update. This will be before update. Is after update? After update. I have written all the logics inside the uh, is before. So I'm checking here. If it is before insert, this will fire only on before insert. if it is after insert after insert if it is before update before update if it is uh, after update after update and if it is before delete before delete after delete after delete you getting me now this code okay now if i save i just have saved it hmm? let me just close the unwanted debug logs got it now i'm going to go and insert a new opportunity i'm just going to clone the same opportunity and click on save now if i save what's going to happen what do you think what's going to happen now see i just have created i just have inserted the new opportunity so ideally it should fire the before insert and the after after insert as well you got it now if i click on this and open the first log debug only here we go this will fire only on before insert and after you getting me so line number 5 and line number 10 so this is how you are controlling the business logic you are executing line number 5 only when the before insert happen you are again executing the line number 10 only when the after insert happen very easy i'm going to go and update this save did nothing just updated it and now if i go and double click on the let us log same thing will happen before insert and after insert see sorry before update and after update why because line number um and number what line number 13 has been executed and line number 18 has so this is how you control the business logic inside the trigger with the help of this trigger variable these are the standard variable okay and uh, by the way trigger self is a class right so if i put here trigger class in sales for is out apex references triggers see this is the class use the trigger class to access the runtime context information in a trigger such as the type of the trigger or the list of s objects records that has trigger out so this this trigger class has many variables are you getting me see we discuss about um, uh, static method and uh, non static method like the same way there could be static variable and non static variable if it is a static variable the class this particular class named trigger defined by salesforce has many variable defined and these are the variable you see this is the variable i used is update what it does it return true if this trigger was fired due to an update operation from the salesforce user interface or apex or api you getting me i just call this variable trigger dot is insert trigger is the class is insert is the static variable so i just call this and what it does it returns true if the trigger was fired due to an insert operation very simple right so this is how we use the 
trigger context variable this is called trigger context variable which will help you to get us the data based on that we can execute our business law okay so in the next video i'm going to introduce few more trigger context variable and once we learn those all those trigger context variable i'm going to go and write the actual business logic these are the basics of trigger what we are learning all right so see you in the next video